Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, episode two, entitled Money, Money, Money. Are you not living the life you want to live because of what you think you think about money? Stay tuned, and thank you for listening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, talking about the way we think about money tonight. Yeah. With me, my co-host, Talana Simpson. How's it, everyone? And uh, joining us tonight is Martin Sam. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's awesome having you here, Martin. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. Martin's a um, quite a entre- entrepreneurial spirit. Um, with a few things he's, he's going to share with us tonight regarding more the mindset of money and 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 what's behind it. Um, and I think I'm just going to jump into it. Um, yeah, can with with um, with the first thing we want to we want to kind of explore tonight. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, most people's perceptions about money is that they they need money in order to make money. Um, your father came from China with nothing. Yes. Um, as far as I understand, he had no money. He had no background or anything in South Africa. No education. Uh, no education. Couldn't speak English. Yeah. Yeah. And he he made quite a success of his life, even with no background, nothing behind him. Um, tell us tell us about his story. Well, my dad was born in the middle of World War Two in China, and um, he was pretty much left to fend for himself. Um, he lived in China with his mom until he was about fifteen years old, and mm. he came to this country as a stowaway. In a, in a in a on a ship, um, like I said, he couldn't. You know, in China there was no money at that time. There. It was um, very difficult mm-hmm. just living there. Um, so when he got here, he couldn't speak English. Um, he had debts to pay. We had to pay the people that brought him over into the country oh, wow. um, for that. And he just came here and he started working. He didn't have that much support from everyone else or his dad. So he pretty much did it all on his own. He spent about, I think he, at one time he said he was earning about two pounds a month. 50 cents of that he had to um, pay to um, learn English. Um, You know, 50 50 cents of that was for living and then 50 cents of that, 50 pence of that he sent back to his mom um, every month. Um, So he had, he stored 50 cents a month um, from his two pounds a month, they yeah. ended up opening his own business, working for a. Well, first he worked worked as a truck driver, but I mean over twenty thirty years he ended up opening his his own business. Retired when he when he wanted to, and he put um, three kids through school and university. Yeah. So, um, my my th- my thing about that is it teaches you that you know that there are no limitations in terms of. You know what you can or cannot do in terms yeah. of your wealth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Definitely does. Um, what 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 would you say specifically regarding that? Is what you learned from your dad? <laughs> it's you know, money's a big thing to me now. It's it's always been you know being raised by him and you know him experiencing poverty. Um, he always made um, us really focus on making money because I mean he he struggled through it and he mm. perceived a lot of hardship around it. So making money and um, getting educated was always really really important. Mm. So, um, but it was also an area that he struggled in a lot, um, and especially with me, he spent a lot of time where we spent hours and hours and hours where he like practically bashed it into me <laughs> in terms of the way <laughs> I should be making money, who I should be working for. Um, what I should be doing, how much I should be saving, and a lot of that has been incorporated yeah. into what I do today. Okay. Um, but you know, I got a lot of the experiences from the way he he related to money and his perceptions about money. Um, so, you know, how so that affected him, and that made me look at life and making money in a different way. Mm. So what were some of the ways that he actually looked at money? Because obviously it sounded like he spent a lot of time, he was very particular about how much money he saved, how much money he sent back. And I think there's even one point where, 
I think you were telling us that briefly when we were having um, coffee the other day, where he couldn't even save much. He had to. There was extra expenses. Yeah, or because so um, at first he had, he he sent a bit of money back to his mom, but then at one stage his mom suffered from a stroke, so he had that to pay for extra nursing money mm. for that. Wow. So that even cut down more what he has to a point. Like logically, I actually can't understand how he did it. If you think about it from yeah. a logical point of view, where he did, he just. He just he just saved and saved and saved. He had an objective of where he wanted to go, mm. and I mean that is uh, it was for a long point. I I couldn't picture that. I mean, you consider who I was when I was a fifteen year old boy. My main concern was <laughs> playing TV games and hanging out with friends. Yeah. And imagine the mindset that you had to go through, like illegally being shipped on a on a on a boat to another country. To country you couldn't speak English. You'd never yeah. been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, and it still is. I keep on learning it every day because there are times where I do hit doubt in terms of what I what I think I can a- achieve. But that was the one thing that I got from him was um, that you know the things that I that I believe and I got taught from school on how I could make money. Mm. His life completely smashed those perceptions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think for me as well, if I just put my little personal thing in here. Excuse me. Was to see somebody or to hear about somebody take a quarter or less of what they're earning, yeah, um, and making their life worth yeah. what they want it to be worth, mm. yeah, um, was quite inspiring, um, and, and it kind of opened my mind into seeing that. Listen, doesn't matter where I am right now in my life. Yeah, it's exactly that. that. Um, it's possible. And I mean, the thing is, when he lived, you know, because he passed away um, about 13 years ago now, mm. um, he he was never a dead person. Mm. He he never bought, you know, I think he bought his one house on credit, but he aimed at paying it off and everything since of that was through cash. So he, yeah. you know, he always had money for what he needed. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's. It's an intense story. It is intense. Yeah, it yeah, is definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, l- I learned a lot about that. Even some of the things that he struggled, um, I've taken those lessons and gotten a greater, deeper understanding from from making money and wealth around that as well because um, he did get attached to the money itself and he did struggle and it actually led to his death in a way where losing money... Um, near to the time to when he died caused him depression oh, okay. um, and you know, there was a big impact and I've taken that and I boiled it into what I do today with when teaching people how to make money that it's getting rid of our perceptions towards it yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not about the cash itself it's about your mindset yes it is your yeah. mindset yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so how, how would you describe your, your father's mindset if you if we could try and like to, to sum it up. So, I mean, it definitely sounds like la- later on he never ha- had a lack of money, but he did come from a place where he had a lack. So, did uh, he have a very like um, abundant kind of view on the world? No, he didn't actually. Yeah. He had a he had a perception of scarcity, and his mindset, I think, was to work no matter what to fulfill. That's scarcity. Mm. So that's mm. how he built his wealth. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So he sounded like a very hard working. He was a yes. he was a hard man. Yeah. He was yeah. he was a tough he was he was very really hard working. Okay. Um it was six days a week from five thirty in the morning till five every day. Um his focus was work. Okay, well. But um it's he he never he never got a schooling. His schooling was English. He he taught himself math, he taught himself how to run a business and I mean yeah, based on what we're talking about today and possibility, that just shows you that there aren't any excuses towards, you know, at mm. least living a comfortable life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really up to you and how yeah, you, you tackle the, the circumstances you find yourself in. Yeah. And I know we, we were sitting at, earlier at Wimpy and we, we're going to look at it later, the, the, the mind, the millionaire mind checklist. Um, it's going to be our little resource we're going to share with you. And we were talk, debating there, even one of the points in that is that um, it takes a long time to create wealth. And I think from your father's story, it, it 
was it a long time for him? Because I know your story is slightly, you, you, you were even debating with me about it, but did it take him? I, I don't even think it really took him that long, you know, relatively speaking. I mean, considering, I think he had more challenges, I think, than we would have. Mm. Mm. But um, he died when he was 60, so he, he died pretty young, relatively speaking. Yeah. So it's not like he spent, he didn't spend his entire life until up until the day that he passed away um, making money. He made it way before yeah. he passed away. Yes. Okay. So, so I wouldn't say it took extremely long, no. Yeah, yeah. I think time is probably a relative here because um, people have a, have a perception um, that it'll take time and it does take time <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight, um, but it doesn't take forever. No, it does, um, it's, you choose how long you want to take it. In yeah. my opinion, no. Um, going deep into my perceptions of what money is, it's it's a choice. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's a cause and effect relationship. You know, re- I mean, it might be relative in terms of how you're talking, but you know, you could you know, we spoke about Mark Zuckerberg where. You know, I mean, you obviously, when you look at how long he, he struggled and there were difficulties in terms of where he got getting to where he is now, but you know, the amount that he made, relatively speaking, is a massive. Yes. You know, you could say that it took seven years to get where he is, but you know, the families that have taken three, four hundred years to get to where he is today. Yeah. So, it's it's going much deep into the perception. So, so when you say money is a choice, what do you mean by that? Because I choose money, <laughs> you know. Um, what, there's more to what you. Yeah, I believe that your perceptions dictate your actions, and will dictate your reality and which choices you take. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have different, you know, those perceptions we gain about money are from school or from our parents, etc., 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 and the way we're supposed to do it, all the media. For example, but I believe, like anything else in life, it's a cause and effect relationship. The average person, I think, struggles because they expect money to come to them, but they don't understand that they've never been taught that money is you can affect money like you could affect um, moving the the water on in this glass. It's, It's why I brought my prop. <laughs> Show us your prop. Show us your prop. <laughs> so I like using because because I teach programs on how to make money. So I don't know. Does this cause yeah. come yeah. in? So I u- I use the concept of the law of conservation of energy, okay. where um, energy isn't created or destroyed; it's transformed from one form to the other. Mm-hmm. And we have. <coughs> sorry, you want to just slightly rock it where your mic is? It's the right mic. Oh, okay. The screen. Okay. Um, So I believe that just like if I applied a force to this balloon, it would have an effect on the balloon. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I I believe it's exactly the same way with money. You never got any any money that you'd ever gotten in the past was never. It just it didn't just come out of thin air. It was based on an action you took. Okay, Okay. Yeah. So. If you wanted money very fast, you'd need to apply a force very, very quickly in terms of... And that force needs to be quite strong, though. It could be strong. It could be clever. Okay. You know? It could, it could be down to a lot of hard work. It could come down to a lot of education. It could be down to doing something very daring mm. or <clears throat> doing something like Mark Zuckerberg did where it was something that was really needed. Okay. A niche. So, so we were talking about he, uh, how he added so much value that hence someone w- was willing yeah. to pay a lot of money for it. And so it was yeah. a, a very quick yeah. turnaround yeah. around for him. So, <laughs> so that, that's my perception of money is that people struggle a lot. You yeah. know? Um, people make decisions based on money in terms of how much they can make. And people choose who they marry. People choose the jobs that they want to make, uh, the Indeed. jobs that they want to do. People decide whether or not they can travel and see the world based on their perceptions of money. Um, But I believe that you can live the life that you want to live by understanding that you can be the cause 
and affect how much money you want and live the type of life that you want. Okay. Um, so is, is that saying you, you're changing what you want to fit your money or you change... No, you're changing your money to get what you want. Cool. No, that's I'm just yeah. clarify, clarifying yeah. with this. Yeah. So it's you exactly that. It's a cause and effect relationship. You know, um, bank robbers use the same principle. They're swapping, you know, they're threatening you, you know, for your money. So it's, it's an exchange. It's a very crude form of exchange. Um, but it's still a form of exchange. So going into like a deeper understanding of how to make money and where it comes from, it's just understanding however you want to do it, what effect or cause you can make to get the effect that you want. Mm. Yeah. She's stirring something in your mind. No, no, I'm, t- I'm trying to think. <laughs> so, so you you said it as you're changing your money in order to have the life well, you well, want. Yeah, say that two, again. Two ways of seeing it: either that you let, let's say you have X amount of money, you can change your requirements, so you can want less. Less. In which case, you'll to, be to happy. To deal with yes, or okay, so or, or you can un- want or unhappy. Or, or, or un- yeah, well, people yeah. Are, people stay unhappy because of it. You know, so yeah. if you've chosen to want less. Therefore, you, you're achieving what you want, and theoretically, that yes. should give you your happiness. Yes. Mm. Or you, c- you can choose to go, I want this, therefore, I'm going to increase the amount of money I'm earning to achieve my mm. happiness. Yes. Exactly. So, so it comes yes. down because, and Dimantin always okay, talks I'll about the quality exactly. of your life is the quality of your questions, and I think that's yes. so important. So, sort of like, and I always say, say it even from my one, one matchsticks, you know, story, and that is, it's not about, um, oh, I can't afford this. It's The question is, how okay. can I afford yes. it? Because that changes everything. That, as we say, you talk about it, just it flips your perception yes. totally mm. to, well, what do I need to do to, to, to make, make happen. this happen? No. Yes. Um, it's, it's, uh, that's what I was saying before, is your perceptions will dictate your actions. If you perceive that there's no way you're going to make money, you're not going to go look for them. Some yeah. fulfilling prophecy. Yes, and even there are times when you perceive it doesn't happen, opportunities are going to come past mm-hmm. you every single day, and, you and you're just going to walk straight past them. Um, so I, I spend, I mean, I've worked with you on that, mm-hmm. where you shift your perceptions, you're more likely to get what you want. Well, it's a it's it's happy, like happier so. people on average through all the studies are wealthier and more successful because they're more likely to see the chances that come up in their lives. Yes. Yeah. It it kind of links into your what's called your reticular activation system. Yes. If you go and buy a car today, and so I go and buy a blue, a, car. A blue mini. Yes. Um, all of a sudden, tomorrow I'm driving down the road. I just see blue minis. And I'm like, oh. where did all these blue minis come I from? I had this? that. I've always wanted a four by four. I always thought it'd be like a Land Rover, and then everyone say no, Toyota is better, and then someone said a Jeep. I promise I've never seen so many Jeeps oh, in really? my life until that person said, what it's about a Jeep? So if something's it's important it's exactly yeah. like that. It's exactly then like you'll that. you'll see it, yeah. 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 It is. And that's one, one thing is people criticize themselves for not making enough money, but um, when you look deep enough, it's not important to them. Yeah. So it's, you know, there, there are a few, th- there, the, but the thing is what I'm trying to get to is there are things you can change in your mind and your perceptions mm. that will allow you to get more wealth. Mm. It's, yeah. a, it's a choice. And I think we're going to start exploring some of those now. The the one question that I want to to just bring up, I think we we might be jumping a bit in our audio, but it's so you your father had a really rough upbringing. You said when he was fifteen, he was you know stowed away on a ship and and trying to save money. And that when you were fifteen, you were playing computer games, and and so your thanks to your father's hard work, you had a very different upbringing. Obviously, his he drummed in a whole lot of stuff to you. But maybe share a bit about, about your story because your story is, is very interesting when yeah, it's how different it is to your father's but also the, the learnings from... It, it's similar to that as well because, you know, that's the thing. I did have a lot of, you know, my, my parents did give me a lot, you mm-hmm. know, from, from the work that they did. Um, so up until a point, I had no motivation in terms of going out and making my own money. Mm. But like I said, my, di- my, my dad passed away when I was pretty, I was quite young, relatively quite young. And I struggled with career and school where up until um, standard eight, I had no interest in school. I was failing everything. Um, standard nine and ten, I ended up improving my marks and I got into university. But the way I, uh, the way I chose my career was I page in the back of the, of the Sunday Times newspaper and I chose de- degrees based on who, had the, who was offering the highest salary. Wow. So I chose... I started off as, a, an, as an engineer 
and I did that for six months and I hated it and they kicked me out because I was failing <laughs> <laughs> and I dropped out and then I spent the last six months of that year doing a business course and I thought, okay, this is a bit more interesting than engineering. I did my first year of BCom and I wanted to become a chartered accountant and then I, I f- was failing that year and I dropped out um, and I went, it took me seven years to finish a three-year degree um, wait, 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 say that again. It took me seven <laughs> years to finish. Uh, the fir- first year was the best three years of my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, y- you know, I, and even when I finished, I I did not, you know, still didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. My marks were so bad, so I perceived that I couldn't go and get a job. Um, I spent years... Um, I spent two years just sitting around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, at that stage, making money was really, really important to me. Um, I always had like a huge urge to to make a lot of money, but um, up until that point, I had no idea how to do it. And it was based, you know, and I had all this perceptions in my mind that because I'd done so bad in varsity that I wasn't going to be able to make money. Yeah. Um, and then... And if I can just stop you there, because I, I think that's a it's a key perception or that that's in in society nowadays is that I think we've been drilled into us. You have to do well at school because if you don't do well at school, you can't get into varsity. If you can't get into varsity, and you can't get a can't job, and job. you can't get a job, you're not going to have a career. And if you don't have a career, you're not going to get retire with that yeah. golden happy. handshake. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you can't, yeah, can't do that, then you're not living <laughs> a life. So, so it's quite interesting that that was that was part of your your mindset. At that point, it's like you said, I'm a master so bad, I perceived I couldn't even get a job. So you carried on studying. and Yeah, but that's, that's I mean, what I'm coming here from is um, those perspectives. Those perspectives, I believe, are not real. Mm. Mm. You, know, I, uh, you know, when I come in and try and tear down perceptions, it's just because I think they're a whole bunch of absolute crap. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, that's, you know, the synchronicity of life where you attract... Um, different things into your life to teach you the lessons you need to know and um, the, I have a huge you know, try not, I don't want to really call it a war but I have like one of my missions is to shift the way people are taught in schools and how to make money yeah. because I think yeah. it's but we're seriously not, we're not taught to make money in, in school no you're not no. and I mean like you like using that example of like how you make how you're supposed to study and and get a degree, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you look at how many people you know in varsity that are really, really wealthy, um, what percentage are that? Like the ones that really, really made um, true, true wealth, not earning a high salary, but being super wealthy. It might be 1%. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's there's two sides to it. It, it. it doesn't say don't go and study. No, 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 I'm not saying that. You... you you obviously want a base of of education, and as your dad did as well, he educated himself, yeah. not necessarily th- necessarily through a school or through university, F- through but he did he educate himself. Yes. Through what he needed, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the important thing that I'm getting is, which which for me is a big thing, is is you need to know why you're going to do it. Um, why do you want to go to varsity? You know, why yes. do you want to go study engineering? That's exactly that. That's um, exactly that. Is it is it because you think the salary's high, or is it because you enjoy engineering and it and it's something you 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 inspired about? Or because you know because you think that you need to do it, because yeah. the one the one example that I use is when you ask the average teenager that's going into choosing a career and going to university, they bring up three or four subjects. Mm-hmm. Um, it's engineering, accounting, or computers. But I mean, are they choosing that based on doing that because that's what they want to do? Or are they choosing that because that's the available choices? Yeah. Because then, if you live in the United States, you have this in, like ten times more choice. So, yeah, it's it's. I think it's a madness. Yeah. 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 And I mean, the, and what I'm bringing this up for is because you know people struggle with money. You know, people stay in marriages because they perceive they can't yeah. make money. Um, in jobs. people hate staying jobs that they they, that they hate. They hate. Um, hate people jobs that they, they don't hate. go out they and hate. make money to go and travel um, the world. 
um, because because of money. So my thing is that you can have what you want. It's just based your perceptions that you've been taught up until now aren't real. You know, it's 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 not real. Well, I think that <laughs> there's a whole big conspiracy <laughs> theory, and we're going to get, I think, Scott in one day because he loves talking about how that's yeah. a whole big conspiracy about, you know, we locked into this way of how we look about mon- we, at money, specifically so the powers can be can control the masses because they're controlling the way we think around money and hence how mm. we. Mm. Yeah, I think it kind, of, it kind of brings us to our book of the night. Yeah. yeah. Um, tonight we're doing Think and Grow Rich. Um, now the thing about this book for me yeah, is that <laughs> every successful person that I've that I've been in touch with has spoken about this book. Mm. Um, internationally, everybody recommends this book um, for some reason. Go on Napoleon Hill. Yeah, Napoleon it Hill is the author. It was written in the 1920s, did you say? It was like yeah, young. I think he started yeah. the research in uh, the early 1900s. Mm. Yeah. And he actually, he actually uh, it's like you say, it was, it was a research project yes. um, that he actually did out of his own uh, accord. He was asked to do, to do certain things by, uh, who was the guy who employed him? Uh, Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie, that's right. Um, and in his work... He also worked for Roosevelt. Um, actually, got got paid a dollar a year to advise Roosevelt, and um, through that, working with Carnegie as well, he wrote the book uh, "Think and Grow Rich" by by interviewing um, and talking to at that stage the the wealthy and successful people um, of that era. And it was interesting. I, I listened to a audio of the book the other day. It was talking about Henry Ford. Mm. And when he first went to see Henry Ford, um, Henry was working out of a dumpy old garage um, working on this piece of car mm. thing. And he thought, why am I coming to talk <laughs> to this guy? Um, so, yeah, interesting. It's, it, so it's a powerful book. Tell us, about, tell us a bit about your perceptions about the book. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's related to to what what I was saying about perception. Um, I, I like I like ans- you know asking or, or phrasing the title in different ways. You, what is what are you thinking about that is not allowing you to be rich? Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. Because, like I said, your perceptions are going to dictate your actions. So, what? if you perceive that making money, you need to be clever. You need to have a degree. You need to. Um, it takes. In, it takes a long time. Um, any uh, any uh, any myth that you've been taught growing up, um, that's going to dictate. You know how much money you're going to make. So yeah. I mean, I think you know Napoleon Hill was coming from a point is focus on, you know, think about what you need to think about to get rich. Yeah, because I mean, his first chapter is thoughts are things. I mean, I think mm. his whole premise is that everything starts with, with the thoughts. energy of a thought. Of a thought, yes. yeah. So, and I think one of the, the key things, I mean, his next chapter is about desire. His six six steps is mm. be very, 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 very specific and clear on <laughs> what you want. Yes. <laughs> Like so specific and and clear and visualize it and blah. And he has a whole lot of you know exercises. These six steps. Um, it's a profound yeah. book. Um, yeah, the, the the one of the the core things that I can say about it is he t- somewhere in the book, I think in in the first chapter or the first few chapters he talks about. Um, you he talks about zero point zero two percent or zero point zero two percent of everyone who reads the book will understand what he's saying. Mm. Mm. I say read the book until you understand what he means by that. Mm. Um, and I truly believe, like what he talks about, is what if what you think about is going to lead to where you, where you're going in terms of, and and it could be related to money, rich. It could be relationship wealth. It could be career wealth. Yeah, it's, it's whatever it's you think and focus on. So we just need to link it back to your story. I think I interrupted you. You were talking about how you it took seven years to do your your three year degree, and 
it sounds like I think when we were talking about your story that there was a shift somewhere once you found what you wanted to do and and that's obviously links to to link and uh, think and grow rich because he he talks about being specific on what you want mm. and until we know what we want it's hard to be you know specific yeah. about it so yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about that yeah part, my part of my the story. journey is like really really interesting because like I said it did I battled for and I still struggle because there are new goals and that I set for myself and that I'm trying to achieve and the, and the struggles involved with that. But, you know, my my thing is that I did take, it took me ages where I studied for seven years. I didn't work. Um, I, I didn't follow the traditional. You said you never had a job. Yeah, I've yeah. never had a job. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and today where I am today is where I, I had to sit and most people un- didn't understand where I had, where I wanted to go. Because deep down, I criticized myself for not getting a job mm-hmm. and criticized myself for you know, not doing well in university and not getting, becoming a professional in the industries that I've chosen. And I had tons and tons of criticism from everybody else. But where I am today is that I'm self-employed. Um, I worked, I've worked as a professional financial markets trader for over 10 years. Um, I have an IT company and a training company. Um, so that sort of smashes the perception of where I sh- the route I should have taken mm. into where I am today. Yeah, you know that's that's where you're getting into as well, where it ties into to how my dad's story comes into this, yeah. because um, you know it's a similar it's a similar it's a similar path where it's it's not using the traditional way you should do it, um, you know. Yeah, to get to where I am today, mm. and also uh, it's not like it's there's nothing wrong with with doing it the traditional way and getting a job, but I'm just saying that you know it comes down to perception where you know those stories that would be told in terms of how we're supposed to make money. Yeah, well, you know, don't dictate how we can make money. I think mm. I think uh, what's coming out for me is the is the choice option. It's um, it's, it's all choice. It's all choice. You uh, don't let yourself get held back by misperceptions. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want to pursue, pursue it. Um, but the the excuses that you might think are valid might just need a different viewpoint yeah. um, to get to where you want to be. Yeah. And I think also it's for me it's it's about not beating yourself up if you don't fit into the tra- traditional mold. Yes, it's like yes. it's a you saying you tried for so long, to, you know, you know, yes. criticizing yourself because you didn't, you weren't excelling at varsity and, and passing, you weren't mm. getting a job. But it's almost like if we try and force ourselves to do something that's not us. Yeah, yeah. Be yourself. We, yeah, yeah, be yourself. So if you are the out of the box person, be out of the box yeah. and go. Don't give a job. Yeah. Go and create companies because we need people to create yeah, companies yeah. to create the jobs for the people who want those jobs. Yeah, yeah. I think so that, I think that's that's an important point. I think um, the the fact that both sides are needed um, yes, and definitely. pursuing a career is 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 a great great thing to do. Um, and we we know need both sides. We need we need the the company that's there. We need somebody to start that company, have the vision, and we need the people to support that vision. And, and, and make the company yes, work. Definitely, without, without a doubt. So, so, so somewhere a point uh, along the line, you found something that you love doing. And, and that's what you're trying to say. So you, you finally yeah, stopped uh, criticizing yourself for not having the job. And I think it was when you got into the trading. Yeah. Uh, trading well, really it was piqued your interest. It, wa- it wasn't, you know, I mean, when it comes down to vision, I, I was still very lost in terms of where I wanted to go. And it came down to my dad as well. The one thing he always told me to do was, Whatever I learned, whatever whatever I did, whether it was a job or opening my own business, that I had to understand the market, and I never forgot that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, there was one period in time where I spent two years doing nothing, and then I really made a firm resolve that I was going to move to the next level and start making the money that I wanted to make. And I took a long, I took a long break. I went overseas. Um, it was like a sabbatical. Which I was really on sabbatical, but it was uh, <laughs> a, f- a form of sabbatical. Double sabbatical. Where I went away for three months and just went and um, opened my mind, learned more about myself, s- saw, you know, got out of my comfort zone. And then when I got back and I said, just before 
I started looking for a job or starting a business that I'd go and do a course. So I did a I did a trading course and as soon as he started speaking, I'm like, this is what I want to do. And um, everything else is just spawned from that. The training company is spawned from that because um, after, after realizing what I wanted to do um, and it suited my lifestyle because I didn't have to go and sit in an office. I could sit at home and work as a trader mm. and make money. Um, and then people started asking me, how how do you do that? How do you, you know? And so I thought, okay, the, uh, how I learned it was going around doing courses everywhere. Um, so it was 10 years worth of collecting different f- information to, to understand how to, how to do what I, what I did. And people were interested in it. So then I formed the coaching company and the training company teaching people how to trade markets through that. And then every th- all the other courses spawned from that. So there's a, you know, there's a different synchronicity in the universe where you know, when you get in line with it, things just start falling into yes. place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As mm-hmm. saying, being, being authentic, stepping into finding. So there's nothing wrong with exploring a lot of things until you find it, what it is that yeah. really sparks you, but mm-hmm. also giving yourself permission to do that exploration and then to step mm-hmm. into what you want to do yeah. when you find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because and I think that's you were talking about part about the, the misperceptions or, or the perceptions we have in, in society now is that um, you can't make money if you do what you love kind of thing. No. There's a, whereas you actually the opposite is true. When you're doing what you love, as you say, the synchronicities yeah. come in, you accelerate, you add so much more value. So you're able now yeah. to share those 10, ten years worth of... I teach that you're most, of, you're most likely to make the most money that you can make doing what you love. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's where we can put the most effort in. Yeah, because yeah. it's easier. It's a path of least resistance. Um, yeah. There's a whole process behind that. Uh, we don't really have time to get into, but yeah, it's what I would call a driver. Um, it's uh, what what uh, Doctor John Domantini calls it values. Um, if you value something, it's something that you inspires you, and um, and you'll pursue it with through pain and pleasure. But also, like, no one, you know, not many people teach you how to turn, you know, what you love doing into money. Mm. You know, I I think I found a way on how to do that. Mm. You know, when you understand the concept of how you can mold money um, and life um, into the way way you want it, you know, you can do that with what you love doing. Yeah. Um, Because I I bring this up when I, with my, with with groups, when I teach groups, and I brought it up the last time I spoke, I said, um, yeah, when you when you look at all the great, the great wealthy people, the great famous people in the world, they always say that they love what they're doing. Mm. You know, mm. do they make money? Do do they, do they love what they're doing because they make a lot of money, or do they make a lot of money because they love what they're doing? doing. Yeah, it's probably both. Yeah. yeah, it's probably both, but it's more more from they love what they're doing. More they love from what the love loving yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. And when you love what you're doing, it's it's natural. You speak about it. Y- you know, when when you speak to someone else about it, they inspire you and they they're interested in that. Yes. Yes. So yeah. this touches nicely on on the video that we we're gonna because I think it was two things: a sabbatical and and that. But yes. in the the video we're gonna share with you now, Stefan <coughs> Sachmeister or something. He talks about the power time off. But before we get there, he speaks about a, a job versus a career versus a calling. Yeah. And he was saying like like a job is just literally the nine to five. You just go. You do what you need to do. You get your paycheck. You you can spend it where, where you yeah. want. The career is a bit more meaning, so it's a bit more meaning in, in what you're doing, but the calling, you would do even if you didn't get paid for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that and it, it's... Yeah, because we all have something we do that you do it because you love it. Yes. And even if it takes more effort than you think it should, uh, there's, let's call it pain involved, you'll still do it yeah. because you love it. Yeah. yeah. And... When it's when you're enjoying it, it's the same thing. So even through the pain and the pleasure, you're still pursuing it and you're still doing it. And I think that's the calling that he's mm. that he's talking about. But that also comes down to when people choose their jobs and choose their careers. It's based on, you know, what they think they should do. It's never based on what they'd love to do. Mm. And that's why there's no like mistake why, you know, fifty six percent of first years drop out in the first year. There's no mistake why there's eighty percent of um, employees hate their jobs. I, I, I read a report. I read a, I read a story where they said sixty-seven percent of South African professionals are looking for new jobs. Wow! 
high, high, high position professionals. Mm. So, I just wanted to link back to one thing before we get to the video. Um, you sp- you spoke about um, loving what you do, but then you show people how to do that, who t- how to do what they love, and then turn that into into making money. Yeah, because mm. I think that it, it goes together, but it's also two separate separate things, and it makes me think of. Um, Anthony Robbins always says um, there's two things in life it's an art and in science where where um, fulfilling your life's an art making money is a science yes so basically what what you do then is is show people how to take take their art and make a science to bring the money into it, if that makes sense i th- I think yeah, definitely true. But also, no, I agree. With, I agree with you one hundred percent. There, it's. I, I'm saying that's the most effective way to do yes, it. Yes, yes. But making money overall is a science. Yeah, it's just understanding the components of what you need to do to affect it into wh- the way you want it. Yeah, yeah. Because where does money come from? You know, I mean, e- like every other cent that you've ever gotten, you know, it has come from another human being. You know, it's which came money from someone else. Which yeah. came from yeah. someone else. So, I mean, if you understand, like I say, like the secret to making money is just trying to find, um, <laughs> is, is, is yeah. giving someone else more reason for them to hold on to the money. Yeah. I think that's a good question right there. Because is, is when, when you said that, it's kind of like, you know, where does money come from? And if you ask that for, well, to anybody um, out there, they'll kind of have to think about it. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the thing. Saying yeah, it, it comes <coughs> from my, it comes from my boss, or it comes from selling something. Yes, it's an answer, but but where does it really come from? Yeah, and I think that's kind of what we. Yeah. So, yeah. so how do you define money then? I, I've got a very um, funny definition of it. Money was this, and there are different levels of money, but. Like getting simple, money is the stuff that they created so that we didn't have to carry a cow around when you wanted to swap for someone else. Mm, mm, mm. All money is is a form of exchange. It was designed yeah. to facilitate um, a swapping of what someone else had for what someone else wanted without needing to, like when we were cavemen, carry, you know, transporting a car to another. Yeah, right. so it's, for me, it's just an exchange of energy. Yeah, and the money just re- represents yeah. that exchange. Yeah. Yet today we spend, we put so much emphasis on that piece of paper and forgetting but that it that's just the represents. Misperception. That's the misperception. That's why I, yeah, I say I, I start off my work saying that I believe the world is mad because we've plugged so many ma- so many perceptions about what money is that aren't real. Yeah, yeah, money is power. Money is. Um, intelligence, money is hard work, even you know. But the people money that don't work, self-esteem. yeah, or self-esteem, or even yeah, to a point, money is energy. But when you look at core, like what money is, it's you know, it's a piece of paper. You know, all, all the way people see it and view it is based on their perceptions. When you change your perceptions, you're more likely to to get it because you can't choose when when you when you put it. On the, you made it into this massive um, thing that is not. Mm. You know, yeah, and you've given it too much meaning. You've g- given it too much meaning to what it is. We psycho spend yeah. then, yeah. and you know they, yeah. co- they say we actually spend money for psychological reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which which is not the yeah. and, and I mean I, I like to go deeper where it's not even it's not even the people that are poor and struggling with money. There are people with billions and billions and do- billions of dollars that are. are have completely warped perceptions of money. Mm. You know, I was saying money is n- money is not intelligence, because the people that are, uh, I'm just replying to Cecilia's question here. Money is intelligence. It, it's it's because the people that aren't intelligent then still make money. You know, mm. Mm. so it's it's removing all those perceptions. I, I have an example of you know. People that have a list of excuses on why they are or are, are not making money is take your list of why you perceive that you can't make money, and then go and look in your mind in the world 
someone has sa- the same limitations that you're saying that you have that's preventing you to make money and identifying the people that are making it with those same limitations. Those same limitations. You'll find them every single time. Okay. Yeah. You'll find them all the time. Yeah. So, so maybe d- just to sum up, because I think Cecilia mis- misheard us, is what we're trying to say is that the, the one way people perceive is they put too much meaning to money. So they make money to mean intelligence. Or if you have money, yes. you're intelligent. If yeah. you have money, you're, you're clever. If you have money, you're... you're, yeah. you're yeah. Or, you have, or you have to be intelligent to make yeah. money. Or you, or you have, have to have to. this, um, you know, big fantastic degree yeah. th- that, I'm, that I'm that I'm not going to make. So what we're saying tonight is that money is just actually energy. It's just it a just form represents of exchange. that exchange, yeah. of, yeah. exchange yeah. of energy it's to facilitate it. So when we take the meanings away, yeah. it just comes down to well, you've got something that I need, and I got something that you know that you need. So what yeah. can we do to? Yeah. What? How can you affect it? How can and we it's also the, it the perception of what that value is that you that you put into that exchange. Yeah. So well, like, what can I do? What can I affect that's going to move money into the direction that I want it? Yeah. And then when we're talking about you know your podcast, it comes down to possibility. Is like what, what possibilities and what dreams or what things are you know are you giving up on, based on your limited perceptions? You know? mm. I like that question. Because if money is energy and energy is endless, there is so much energy. There, it's, yeah. it's there, unlimited. There is no, there's abundance of energy. Then there's there should be an abundance of the way we can exchange it. Yeah, I like this question oh, I that I use as, as well in the program. If you go back in time to the caveman days, let's go back two million years, <coughs> even longer. And we, we had a hundred billion dollars in cash and we plonked it in front of a caveman. Like what would you do what would you do with it? You'd probably burn it. <laughs> He'd burn it. Yeah. So because he has no value of it. Exactly. Because it means it's you know, it's to him he didn't need that to facilitate that form exactly, of exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a totally different somebody came here and <laughs> gave you a bunch of paper money from a thousand years ago from a different civilization. What would you do with it? Yeah, exactly. Because it's there. Exactly. It, exactly it's value today, nothing. Yeah. So I mean, so so then I go deeper with that question. If there was no money at that time, there was no paper money. Okay, then where did all the stuff that we have today come from? Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave you I with that. <laughs> I think leave 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 us with that question quicker. Yeah. Let's jump to the video we spoke about earlier. Um, the video yeah. kind of links into a different mindset of um, how we how we can live our life. Uh, you spoke about a sabbatical. Um, the video we've got is a, um, a guy by the name of Stefan Sachmeister. I think that's how you pronounce <laughs> yeah. it. Um, and what he talks about, he talks about the power of time off, as it calls it. Um, Mm. Stefan is a designer um, from New York and what he does is every seven years he closes down his his, well he doesn't close down the company but he basically shuts the company down for a year so you can see what what he's sorry what he's talking about there is 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 how we we spend the green part of our life just um, learning and then the the purple part was we spend 40 years working and then we spend another 20 years retiring it's okay, we can stop it now. It was That's more fine, just yeah. to show that picture. And in his whole philosophy is just that you take, why not take five years off your retirement and disperse it amongst, amongst the years the that you're working and have the, the sabbaticals, mm. as you mm. call it. So, Yeah, and he, uh, when I watched the video as well, he spoke about um, you know, using that time as a... It, it gave him a lot of clarity in terms of where he wants to take his business and where he... Um, it kind of refreshed everything. It's kind of like when you hit yeah. the refresh button. Because I, I don't think you know, we made it clear that he he actually currently uh, he runs a very successful design yes. company. Sorry, yeah. Every seven years, he and his, and his all his staff they shut down the business for a year. Mm. Everyone goes on a year long sabbatical every yeah. seven years. I just think it's it's, it's a crazy wonderful it, idea. It is. It's it's the other thing for me is because. His studio is, as you say, it's a quite a successful studio. Mm. That th- they do the designs for quite a lot of famous Very artists. Top names, yeah. Um, and to top to, brands. to tell them, listen, you can catch us in a year. It's quite a risky thing that would be seen in in, in, in everybody's eyes. Like, what the heck are you doing? 
closing your business now and you've got all these clients, um, these high-flying clients that want to want your business and you're telling them, listen, I, I come back I in a year's I time. Help you now. And one of the benefits you said is they've actually become more successful, more creative and it's financially they do better yeah. with, with this year off in between. Mm. Then it, which is just fascinating. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, but I mean, also, I think what, you know, what I got out of the video was that he doesn't, again, he doesn't follow the traditional, mm. yes, 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 you know, the traditional pattern or story and how we should do it. Um, he, he doesn't have, what I, what I got from him, he doesn't have all those perceptions related to the way he should do it, X, Y, Z. Yes. You know, you need to follow X, Y, Z um, to be, to be, to be wealthy. You have to go to work. You have to follow this set routine. Um, Work for nine years, to five then process. He he's got a completely. He's not attached to it. Mm. He doesn't have that 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 hardcore attachment to it. And I mean, he's obviously doing what he loves, and that's why he can off. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what he said when I said earlier about the job versus career versus calling. He says that year off where they go and he ex- explores projects that he always wanted to do and reads, and he, he learned to meditate on the one time, and they started making movie and all these these wacky things he he did during that year. He, when he came back, he, it's almost like he re, reconnected with his calling. Mm. He had so much more passion and creativity in his work yeah. because he got that time to rest yeah. Yeah. and that time to do what he wanted to do and and explore that. So it's it's a very interesting video, highly worth looking looking at. Just not only from the creative wacky ideas that come out of his sabbatical, yeah. but just the the thinking around it. And he even gives you some st- statistics on certain companies that are starting to do that, like Google gives. Yeah. I think it's twenty percent of the employees' time they to do, what do they whatever they want. To, yeah, to do what what they want to focus on. And look how yeah. how they've grown. Yeah, yeah, and it, it just links back to. I think being being inspired by what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me. Yeah. Mm. For me, exactly. There's there's a lot to get out out of that video. I don't know if we have so much time to get into it, but um, based based on like my interpretations of things, is he really has a free. A, f- a free perception of of money, mm. knowing that you know, and that's uh, that's another thing that a lot of people think is that if I, you know, he's he he's so free around it that he can give or give up that year and know that he can make it back the year yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we spoke about it earlier, um, and I just want to link back to it as well. We we spoke about the clarity. Um, and knowing exactly what you want. Um, I wanted to just share a little story uh, that I thought about when we were uh, preparing for the show. Um, A friend of mine, uh, actually a friend of ours, (laughs) um, was looking to buy a car. And he specifically had the model, he specifically had the color, and he specifically wanted, knew exactly what he wanted. Now, as a lot of people kind of teach or prescribe is, you know, get pictures and write it down and visualize it and, and look at it everywhere you, you are and be sure that you, you know, that you know what you want. And the funny thing is he wanted to buy a, a specific car and in his mind he wanted a silver one. Um, and it was, a, it was a, an SLK Mercedes and he wanted a silver one. And um, all of the pictures that he got... He, he cut out, and, and most of them, well, when he looked for the car, um, he found a silver one, looked at it, wasn't quite happy with it, um, looked at another one, looked at it, it was a silver one, um, wasn't 100% happy with it, never bought it. And end of the day, found the car that was perfect, and he said, well, when he saw it, he's like, right, I'm going to buy it, and he bought it on the spot. Only to realize afterwards, about a week afterwards, um, when he thought about it and looked at the car, he realized that the car was black instead of silver. And um, he realized that all of the pictures um, that he had cut out of the car and put everywhere that he looked at every day was black. Mm. Um, and he, it's funny because he said to me, when he told me the story, he said, he said to me, you know, specifics. Specifics are important. important. Yeah. Um, 
and it's quite interesting to 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 see that, and I think it's important. Yeah, it is leading from that. There's, I think, the the thing that N- Napoleon Hill talks about in the book is he has a set formula in terms of you know what you need to focus on to get what you want, mm. and uh, it's identifying clearly what you want, um, getting the knowledge in terms of what you need to do to affect it to get there, mm. and then taking action towards mm. taking the steps towards getting there. Yeah. Our resource for tonight, if I jump to that, um, Talon, I don't know if you want to tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it's um, this document is called the Millionaire Mind Checklist that Dr. Michael Hall um, developed and, and wrote up. And what it is, is he, he, um, he's, he's the founder of neurosemantics, the cognitive behavioral science, and he's very good at modeling our things. And he went and decided he wanted to learn how to become financially independent and read every book that he could get his hands on and interviewed millionaires and specifically self-made millionaires and then applied, obviously, a lot of what he learned to it. And then a lot of the work in this particular checklist he got from uh, what book is the, the Millionaire Mind, an actual book by Thomas Stanley. He's developed w- this checklist now where you go and you write, you f- look at all, read all the questions and you write true or false, all the statements. Do you have that belief? Are you doing that in your life? Add up your scores and you get a percentage to see what percentage of the, the millionaire mind mindset do you mm. actually have. Mm. Mm. So it, it's quite a, a nifty little little thing because um, I know I did it, the last time I did it was in 2005. Okay. And I was, what did I have then? 71%. The Millionaire Minds, and I read it, it, read it today, today, and I've gone up to 85%. But what was so useful is that not only to know that, that, that in certain areas I've obviously developed over mm. the last couple of years, but it highlighted for me some of the areas I think I could work on, exactly. especially around the time management and the way I see time. Yeah, for me, I think because I did it for the first time tonight, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was interesting to be honest with myself yeah. about the answers. Because the questions in there, uh, 173 questions, highlight certain things that you might think you are doing or focused on. But if you're honest with yourself, you can see, oh, wait a minute, I'm actually not focusing on that part of the part of the what I should be focusing yeah. on to, to develop my wealth. Something I've heard, but I'm not doing it. But I'm not putting it into practice. Um, Martin, what, what what's your feelings about it? Um. <coughs> I agree with I agree with the questions and uh, yeah I, I scored quite highly on it mm. because you know but you know what, what I got out of it and I think is like the main thing that from <laughs> from my dad's story and my story is that you know you can you j- even if you score low on 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 the questionnaire you can affect your life into a way where you can raise your rating and then yes. af- in effect yeah. Yeah, how much money you make. And, and this help going back to this, it's a science. They, there's just certain ways of thinking that, that yeah. lead to yeah. changing you can the way you, you can change cause and effect yeah, of money. You, you, can change, you can change it. There's, there's you know, processes you might need to put in, but um, yeah. uh, you know, I, agree with, I agree with what the questionnaire says, though, is that if you follow um, you know, so, some of the philosophies behind those questions, that you will lead to more wealth. Uh, but it's a choice. Yeah. It is a, yeah, choice. It's a choice. And it's a choice and you've got to take the action. You actually have to do yeah, some, yeah. some of the yeah, work. Action. action is a very important part. And so if anyone wants a copy of this checklist, you just got to pop me an email and I'll email it through. It's just email info at innercoaching.ca.za and, yeah. and request it and yeah. I'll send you your copy. Quick quick last one, Martin, just to wrap it up. Um, give us your quick definition of what is your definition of wealth? It's, it's, I can't give you a quick <laughs> point of that. <laughs> a quick answer. Um, yeah, and I can't really give you a quick one. Because there are different, different ways you want to do you wanna, the way you want to look at it. Mm. Um, if you want to look at pure financial wealth, you know, this is a Robert Kiyosaki definition. Yeah. Um, wealth is how much money you have to survive on if you had to stop working today. Okay. So if you had your salary and you're earning thirty, forty thousand rand a month, and you had to stop, and you had forty thousand rand with the savings, you got a month, and you're spending forty thousand rand a month, you ha- your wealth, you have, you know, you have one month, you have one month worth, worth of wealth. wealth. Yeah. If you had, if you had four hundred thousand rand, 
saved up, you then you'd have 10 months worth of wealth. Okay. So if you want to look at a pure like financial wealth definition, um, that's, what that, it is. that's how I would define it. Yes. we got to we got to wrap up the show tonight. Um, Marjan, I want to thank you for being here okay, tonight. No, thank you for having me. Um, I hope, I hopefully, I was helpful to uh, someone that listens to this. I think definitely for me, it's it's definitely raised a lot of, um, well, not a lot of questions, but it's opened up a lot of ideas in my mind. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Delana. Yeah, it's been great. And yeah, I know I'm definitely still much more conscious now of money being just a, Representing the energy. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it is. It's and I like the balloon. I'm going to remember that. So, to all our viewers and listeners, thank you for joining us. Um, any questions, any uh, comments, please send it through on our website. Um, everything will be on the website, all the wrap ups and the, the audio yeah, will the, be available for you. Yeah. So, thank you guys. Thank you, thank everybody. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank, thank you, Tim. Until next time. Sure. And tune in to Alti Africans on Thursday. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, bye. Bye.